for the children of planet Earth. Climate in crisis, epitaph of Earth. The fossil fuel driven climate in crisis is killing nature and her bees, trees, and seas at a horrifying rate. Fossil fuels are releasing climate altering carbon dioxide faster than the previous 66 million years. Searing Australian heat waves with extreme drought in 2013 prevented plants from flowering. No flowers. No bee food, no honeybees. That year, Victorian beekeepers endured their worst honey season ever. In 2014, Australia produced its lowest honey crop on record. It's not just honey at stake here. My colleagues from the universities of British Columbia and McGill found that between 1964 and 2007, drought and extreme heat slashed cereal harvests by almost 20% in North America, Europe, and Australasia. Rising temperatures and droughts from burning heat-trapping fossil fuels are preventing food from being grown and feeding 7.4 billion procreating humans. Forests around the globe are dying at unprecedented rates from rising temperatures, prolonged heat waves, droughts, wild weather, firestorms, and insect epidemics. 30 billion pines and spruce are dead across western North America from rising temperatures, which unleashed trillions of tree-killing bark beetles. Since the 1980s, the area burned in the U.S. Rockies has spiked by 3,000%. Firestorms have increased by 1,200% in the southwest, and 5,000 thousand percent in the American Northwest. In 2015, wildfires cost the American taxpayers a record two billion dollars. The Amazon rainforest, the lungs of the planet, has experienced three one in 100 year droughts in the last 11 years. At least several billion trees are dead including a 2005 storm that blew down half a billion trees. The loss of the Amazon rainforest means the daily protective shield of clouds, reflecting solar radiation, is disintegrating as the planet experiences unprecedented rising temperatures. In July 2016, 22,000 thousand acres of tropical mangroves along Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria in Queensland and the Northern Territory collapsed from prolonged drought. Unprecedented! Mangroves guard the shoreline, holding soil to the land and providing vital habitat for commercial prawns, crabs, and fin fish like barramundi. Those populations are now crashing. The next time a cyclone rips into northeastern Australia, thousands of tons of shoreline soils will be washed into the sea. The loss of billions of oxygen-making, water-regulating trees is an epic global disaster. The oceans, according to my colleagues at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, have absorbed 300 zetajoules of heat from burning fossil fuels. Since 1997, 150 of those 300 zetajoules have accumulated, the equivalent energy of one Hiroshima-style atomic bomb detonating every second for 75 straight years. The fossil fuel heat stored in the ocean has disrupted cold currents from rising and carrying iron and nitrogen essential to grow phytoplankton, the basis of the entire marine food web, along with blue-green bacteria, prochlorococcus, 
provides 7.4 billion people with almost two out of every three breaths of oxygen. The oceans are missing 40% of the phytoplankton because they've absorbed so much heat from humans burning fossil fuels. In early 2016, my colleagues met in Hobart, Australia, where researchers from National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, presented shocking results. 53% of the pteropods, or free-swimming tiny sea snails, sampled off the U.S. West Coast, have severely dissolved shells. The oceans have increased in acidity faster than the previous 300 million years from absorbing rising fossil fuel-released carbon dioxide. As the phytoplankton absorbs the rising level of carbon dioxide, it releases carbonic acid. The sea snail shells, like all shellfish and coral reefs, are made of calcium carbonate, which melts in an acidic ocean. Over the past 50 years, low oxygen zones from supercharging the ocean with fossil fuel heat have expanded over 1.4 million square miles. Low oxygen zones have dramatically changed what the fastest and biggest fish like sailfish, marlin, bluefin tunas, and sharks can eat. These deep divers are staying much closer to the surface because their prey cannot live without oxygen. In May of 2016, researchers at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, released a stunning report showing that beginning in 2030, large swaths of the Pacific Ocean, including around Hawaii and the U.S. mainland, will be missing vast amounts of oxygen due to the accumulated heat from burning fossil fuels. Scientists from Scripps Institute have shown that burning fossil fuels since the mid-1980s has robbed over 589 oxygen molecules per million oxygen molecules from the atmosphere in both hemispheres. While that is not enough to disrupt human daytime activity, it is enough to begin impinging upon sleep patterns. 60 million Americans suffer from sleep deprivation. Over the previous 50 years, burning coal has tripled the amount of toxic mercury poisoning to 80,000 metric tons in the oceans. Also in May 2016, my colleagues from James Cook University in Australia revealed the enormous extent of the death of the Great Barrier Reef the largest coral reef on the globe. Most corals surveyed along the northern 500 miles of the reef, which escaped the 1998 and 2002 coral bleaching events, are now dead. It's an unprecedented die-off. Coral reefs are home to at least one million different forms of sea life, including sharks, whales, dolphins, porpoises, sea turtles, and so many other forms of marine life that depend upon this crucial habitat as nursery grounds. When corals die, the sea life dies. In July 2016, along a 600-mile stretch of Western Australia's Indian Ocean, my colleagues at the University of Western Australia reported that the kelp forests collapsed from a 2011 marine heat wave, 2.5 C, above the long-term maximum average. 
there's no sign of recovery whatsoever. Kelp forests are essential habitat for hundreds of unique species. When kelp forests die, so too do all their inhabitants. Global warming in the oceans is happening one and a half to five times as fast as anything witnessed on land. An International Union for Conservation of Nature study examined every major marine ecosystem, encompassing life from microbes to whales and the deep oceans. Jellyfish, sea turtles, seabirds, fish stocks, and phytoplankton are shifting toward the cooler respective poles by up to 10 degrees latitude. It's unprecedented. The solution to the fossil fuel-driven climate in crisis is a no-brainer. End the 5.6 trillion annual fossil fuel subsidies immediately. Stanford University workers have created a blueprint for wind water, and solar power to provide 80% of Earth's energy needs by 2030 and 100% by 2050. We have the technology. We have the labor force. We have the money. We lack the political will to break entirely free from subsidizing fossil fuels. It's also time for Japan, Iceland, Norway, Denmark, and Russia to stop killing whales, dolphins, and porpoises. It's brutal, horrific, and unacceptable ecocide. The cetaceans, the whales, dolphins, and porpoises, fertilize the sea with their flocculent fecal plumes. Their poop is rich in iron and nitrogen, helping to regrow the missing 40% of the oxygen-bearing phytoplankton that fossil fuels robbed. The sentient whales, dolphins, and porpoises are helping us breathe and fight the climate in crisis. We've reached the 11th hour and 59th minute of human civilization. Either society walks away immediately from fossil fuels, or we face global dystopia by mid-century. The bees, trees, and seas are dying at unprecedented rates. We are all one. It's in our DNA to protect and love nature. We need nature in order to survive on planet Earth, our home. Hashtag save nature now. Hashtag love is the solution.